Boruto never ceases to have the coolest entrance every chance he gets, man. Boruto vs Hidari is about to be wild. It's that time of the month again, boys. Let's dive into chapter 11 of Two Blue Vortex. So as we know, the last chapter left off with Inojin getting brutally impaled, paying homage to all of his donut brethren. And of course, Himawari's new Ninetales form was revealed. Right off the bat, I just have to comment how cool it is that her hair is separating into nine strands to symbolize the nine-tailed fox. I know it's not much, but it's a detail I really love about her new design. It combines the aesthetics of both Naruto and her grandma Kushina, which is just really unique. In off-rip, Himawari was already walking with a massive aura boost. She seemed unfazed with the situation, fully aware of her new jump in power. Shigadai quickly realized how fast her healing capability was now, pointing out how her leg was completely healed after, like, being snapped in half only moments prior. And in typical Naruto fashion, and honestly I should have expected this, Himawari instinctively shared her chakra with Inojin to save him. Meaning, once again, a major character death was just a fake out. I'm not gonna harp on this too much since I think it was the right choice considering Inojin dying in such a pathetic way would just be really underwhelming, especially for all the people who are genuine fans of his character, myself included, but it is getting a little cliche. With Inojin now healed, Team 10 made the smart decision to get the hell out of Hima's way and let her handle the fight while they rushed Inojin to the hospital. Jura complimented their decision to flee, and Himawari shouldered the responsibility of fighting him just like her dad and brother would have. We get one last sick panel of Himawari, and a funny jab from Jura at Team 10's decision making, before an all-out brawl begins. Himawari gets the first hit in, catching Jura off guard with an earth-shattering punch to the stomach. Honestly really impressive considering this dude is like, what, high Otsutsuki level, since he obliterated Kawaki just a couple chapters ago? Hima followed that up with another punch, making it a two-piece combo special, and sent Jura flying across the barren landscape of the battlefield. Don't know why her eyes look weird here, I think they kinda looked off in the last chapter too, so not sure <laughs> what's really going on here. Guess we can ignore that. Anyways, Jura launched himself back up after the attack, loading up another biju bomb in his eye like he's about to do an almighty push from the sky like pain. Not to toot my own horn, but I have compared this arc to the pain arc in the past, and the similarities do just keep cropping up again and again. If you saw the official chapter teaser, then you'll know what comes next. That's right, Himawari can already use her own biju bomb without any Kurama avatar or chakra mode necessary. Their bombs clashed in a spectacular fashion, equally matched in terms of power. As the smoke cleared, Himawari stood menacingly in a newly formed crater beneath her. At this point, she was literally on par with a god. And if you thought it couldn't get any better, then you'd be right, because Jura proceeded to kick her teeth in the rest of this chapter. <laughs> Great fight, Hima, but it's clear you're no match for this guy. This dude hit what I would consider to be a pretty unorthodox combo on her, doing a Van Persie-esque flying headbutt followed by a backflip curb stomp to her face. Hima looked up at him from the rubble as Jura admired her rapid growth in using the Ninetales' power. But in typical villain fashion, he revealed a truth to her that none of us wanted to hear. Jura was, of course, not even taking the fight seriously. His full strength continues to remain a mystery. Meanwhile, the story snapped back to Sarada vs Hidari, where we saw Hidari collapsed on the ground, recovering from Sarada's previous Chidori attack. And recover he did. Within seconds, his fatal wound was healed. Sarada questioned who he was and how he could use Chidori as he flashed his ugly ass toes at us. I mean, those things are hideous. Please put them away, bro. Hidari noticed Sarada's Sharingan, somehow innately understanding he needed them to execute Chidori properly. Little did he know he already has the Renegon, which is just a further evolved form of the Sharingan, but whatever, I guess we'll just brush past that. Konohamaru cut to the chase, asking him directly what his relation to Sasuke Uchiha was. Hidari hit us with an honestly pretty sad truth. He was just trying to understand it himself, exactly who or what he was. To him, the journey to Konoha was fueled by a desire to find his own identity, following the voice in his head to devour Sarada Uchiha. And there she was, right in front of him. Without wasting any time, he attacked Sarada through his claw mark and one-shot Konohamaru's companion with a fireball jutsu. This dude has to have Sasuke's entire arsenal, which is pretty awesome to see. I also want to point out how badass his move against Sarada was. Like, Loki, this was one of the coldest moves I've seen in 2BV so far. My man just put his hand in his pocket so nonchalantly to make it emerge right behind Sarada, striking her with a Chidori from behind like a G. I mean, it's pretty clear these Shinju have pretty high battle IQ, despite being such novices in combat. So having witnessed this madness, Konohamaru charged in with a Rasengan and Hidari sidestepped it with ease, prepping his third Chidori of the night. But to our surprise, 
Konohamaru actually did something. Bro whipped out a whole new Rasengan variation known as Rasen Barricade and was able to parry a full-blown Shidori at point-blank range. It honestly looks strikingly similar to Shoujoji's signature move, if you can recall him from the Mujina Bandits arc. Not sure if we can call this a true W for Konamaru since the attack still sent him flying into the nearest building, but he's moving in the right direction at least. Also, the initial leaks didn't mention that this was actually a Rasengan move, so I was surprised to read it again in the official translations as a Rasen Barricade. Super cool stuff. It looks like he's out of the fight for now though. Realizing his KD wasn't as high as he would have liked, Hidari took out Sumire as well, leaving just Sarada as the last enemy to beat. Well, her and Nishi technically, but Nishi's pussy ass took one look at Hidari in frozen fear like an ice cube. I mean, bro shit his pants at the sight of Hidari. Him continuing to be included in the action never ceases to crack me up. It's gotta be a gag at this point. I mean, bro was posted up on a telephone pole like Itachi. We're then pretty abruptly brought back to Hima versus Jura, where Hima continued to get pummeled by Jura's overwhelming strength. A backhand and what looks like a mini biju bomb left her tattered and nearly unconscious on the ground. Jura then revealed the best explanation of Hima's powers that we've gotten yet. To him, she was something more than a human or a Jinchuriki like Naruto was. Her existence was now that of a tailed beast itself, meaning her fusion with Kurama was unlike anything we've seen before. Just her healing power alone was confirmed to surpass Naruto's. This also implies Himawari has no seal on Kurama, meaning she very likely is able to use all of the Ninetales' power to its full extent. That may be able to explain how she was able to put up a fight against Jura, but it's still a little unclear. I mean, Kurama is back to his baby form after all, so I doubt the strength Hima can tap into is anything like Naruto could use at his peak. In the next scene, Kawaki and Delta are shown flying to the rescue. Delta pointed out the obvious, that the two of them were charging back towards an enemy that literally just kicked their teeth in a few minutes prior. The logic wasn't adding up to her, but without warning, the two of them were passed in a blur by the one and only Boruto Uzumaki. Bro was on a mission. Just two panels later, he had already blitzed past Jura and saved Himawari from his wrath. Wasting literally no time, he teleported again towards Sarada's location, saving his girls back to back. As Hidari had Sarada pinned down, questioning who the two of them were and what the hell their purpose even was, Borto swooped in with his blade and sliced through Hidari's arm in one fell swoop. This dude is on a generational run of dubs at the moment. The chapter ended with a cold ass page of the two of them staring each other down face to face, teasing what may be the coolest fight in the time skip yet. Master versus student, Chidori versus Rasengan. This is what I'm here for, baby! While I'd have loved for Sarada to do a little bit more against Evil Sasuke, I'm still happy she got her moment last chapter with the badass dodge and counter against Hidari. If it were anyone else, that would have been an insta kill, but these Shinju are just build different. So with all that out of the way, I've got to give my chapter rating for 2 Blue Vortex Chapter 11. Firstly, I think the action was sick as hell. Yes, the speed lines are still annoying at times, but if you look past that, this was the most action-packed chapter we've had in a while. I mean, it was straight hands the whole time, and lots of people got involved. Himawari, Jura, Hidari, Sarada, Konohamaru, Boruto. Lots of people, really cool stuff. I think the plot is moving really nicely, we're building up to what could potentially be a really good climax to the first arc in the manga. If shonen tropes are anything to go by, the good guys may very likely catch an L here against their first opponents. Considering Jura and Hidari are probably the strongest of the bunch, it's unlikely either of them are getting defeated this early on in the story. We still have two more Shinju members that have yet to even be explored in the story. The art was also good as well. There were a couple weak panels that I think could have been a little better quality, but equally I think there were a lot of badass panels as always, Ikimaru knows when to cook. Bonus points for including so many characters this chapter. In the past, the story has been focused on only a few very specific characters to a fault, but the cast seemed a lot more evenly balanced in terms of screen time this chapter, which I really like. With all that being said, I think I have to give this chapter an 8 to an 8.5 out of 10. I really liked it. Well, that's all for today. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to smash the like button down below for more Boruto content. I'm really hoping to up the consistency on my channel here and grow my audience even further. I think we're building a pretty cool little community here. Of course, if you're new here, drop a sub down below to catch all my latest videos. Comment down below what your favorite part of this chapter was. And thank you for watching. I'll catch you next time. Peace out, boys.